producer Dr. Mike Rust uh, to give his concluding remarks. Mike Rust is the, the science advisor to the Aquaculture Office of the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, Mike, you have the floor. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Simon. And I um, also want to thank uh, Patrick, Tom, and Tim for what's really an excellent workshop. Um, just a, a little bit of background. I spent a couple of decades running a, a federal research program in, in Seattle, Washington, working on larval fish development and nutrition. Artemia was a constant part of our work. Um, we used it um, all the time, obviously. Um, but in, in true confession, and I'm not sure I should mention this in this group, we spent actually quite a bit of our time trying to replace Artemia with uh, microparticulated diets. Um, but we we're really only partially successful with that. Artemia remains a strategic ingredient for aquaculture and will be one for a very, very long time into the future. My current position at NOAA is to lead our aquaculture science efforts uh, on a national basis. Uh, development of marine aquaculture is a goal of the US. Uh, we lag behind many other countries, but we're, we're trying to put in place um, ways to, to increase our production of, of marine finfish and, and shellfish. Um, and just Related to Artemia, between the USDA, the Department of Agriculture, and my agency, NOAA, over the past decade, we've supported research on about 19 different species of marine fish. All of these use Artemia um, in the larval stage. And if any of these species grow to form an industry uh, in their future, having a sustainable supply of Artemia will be needed. Um, for us, if it's domestic, so much the better. But, just in thinking about this workshop and what we've seen here over the last hour and a half, um, I think really this workshop shows us how a vision can become a reality. Uh, in this case, the vision for a sustainable long-term industry came from the industry itself. Um, and there was commitment. There was commitment both in providing the vision and also providing some financial resources. Um, other groups needed to make the vision a reality um, were scientists and some sort of governance. Um, industry stakeholders, scientists and governance uh, all got on board working for a common vision. Um, and then there was added some financial resources for, for Greece or for fuel to uh, um, really give us an example that the world can use. This is a very powerful tool. The tools for sustainable management came from science. Uh, management turned out to be way more than just har regulating harvest. It's significant that while it started with good harvest management to accomplish the vision for long-term sustainability and other ecosystem processes became just as important. Uh, in this case, management of salinity, largely through management of freshwater additions um, and flows and nutrient management were key. But understanding things like overwintering, um, genetics, uh, economic value of the lake, um, ecosystem interactions and their resulting ecosystem services, for example, providing uh, habitat for birds and other wildlife, uh, engineering of, of berms and, and devices to move water, modeling and other areas of science also add resiliency to the management and aid in achieving the ultimate vision. And I think this word resiliency is, is why the science is going to be an ongoing need for, the, for this, uh, this effort, uh, especially in the situation with a changing environment. The Western US has been in a persistent long-term drought condition and um, there's no signs that that's abating anytime soon. So to truly have adaptive management, we also uh, need to have an adaptive science plan. And I think this, um, this is a great example of how that works. And it works through coordination, coordination of the various groups, industry, universities, both inside and outside of, the, of Utah, Government science agencies and regulatory agencies and other stakeholders are not trivial and they require a governance structure. Again, this was industry driven in the beginning with government partnering for adding authority, uh, helping fulfillment, support and bringing stakeholder coordination together. Government provided a place and a structure to allow industry science and other stakeholders to interact and eventually added financial and scientific resources to that effort. Further development of policy and legal frameworks were then justified to codify, provide authority and introduce legal tools such as water banking and others uh, for sustainable ecosystem-based management of the Great Salt Lake. 
Um, this management ecosystem, it's really truly is an example of ecosystem-based management. Um, it included the Artemia industry, but even more stakeholders than just the Artemia industry became a part of the, uh, of the, the entire lake management. So to sum it up, in addition to providing somewhere around a third of the Artemia used by world aquaculture, the Great Salt Lake provides a great example of a collaborative, ecosystem-based, sustainable management of a strategic resource for the long term. I would be remiss if I did, if I did not mention um, that we can help advance the Great Salt Lake as a model for sustainable Artemia management as a part of the report of the Sustainable Development Goal Aligned Artemia Aquaculture Workshop Report at the upcoming FAO Committee of Fisheries Subcommittee on Aquaculture 11th session scheduled from May 24th to the 27th of this year. Thank you, uh, Simon, now back to you. Thank you, Mike. Well, that concludes the program for today. I'd like to thank our speakers, Patrick Sorgalus, Thomas Bostiels, Timothy Hawkes, and Mike Rust for sharing their experience with us today. It's been very useful and we greatly appreciate your time and contribution. I have one last announcement before we go. A, a short report on the outcomes of this webinar will be tabled for consideration at the FAO Subcommittee on Aquaculture at its next meeting, which is uh, later this month, I think the 24th to 27th. And the subcommittee will be discussing the outcomes and recommendations of the SDG Aligned Artemia Aquaculture Workshop, which was held in September last year. And there's going to be some extra input from a series of regional meetings that have been held around the world over the last six months or so, including this one. So that report and the presentations from this meeting will be made available on the International Artemia Aquaculture Consortium website in due course. Uh, I hope we'll, we can do videos, but we'll see. And uh, I imagine it will take a week or two to get those up. Uh, but perhaps we'll be able to advise uh, people by email or something uh, when they are available. Okay, that's it. Uh, if there's any last comments from anyone, uh, please feel free to jump in. Otherwise, we're done. Thank you.